Deshaun Watson, the uh, disgraced quarterback of the Cleveland Browns, has a shoulder injury and did not practice today for the Browns. And people around the team reportedly think he could miss the game. What do you think of that? You think he'll play? Well, let's let's throw a shout out to DTR who played a couple weeks ago. Didn't play so great, even though he looked good in the preseason. I know he was a favorite around here to possibly back up Brock Purdy. Uh, UCLA guy, that was your guy. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to play. I don't think it really matters, Grant. To me, when I look at the Cleveland Browns, I, their defense is really good. And it's supposed to be maybe a little bit of rain, a little bit of wind. You would think that would play in the favor of Cleveland. But when your defense is great and your offense can't really move the ball, and that's with Deshaun Watson included, I don't think it's going to matter. Deshaun Watson... I don't know. I, I've got a I've got a behind enemy line show with a Cleveland Browns content creator after this. And I want to know what his thoughts are and what the fans' thoughts are of the whole Deshaun Watson thing. I'm sure they were elated when they got him. Now that it's been a year, I would probably say they're not as excited as they once were. Deshaun Watson is a shell of himself. And it's crazy what one year, about a year and a half away from the game can do to you. Yeah. Um Shout out to Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, I mean, so far this year, he had a game where his quarterback rating was 67, week one. Week two, it was 70. But then week three against Tennessee, his quarterback rating was 123. He completed 80% of his throws, threw for 289 yards and two touchdowns. Um, so it seemed like he was maybe getting it back, and then he got hurt. So I, I feel like still, it's not someone you really want to face because he used to be good. And he was good a couple of weeks ago. And you wonder, like, is he close to returning to the guy he was before it all came crashing down for him? And the answer for the Niners might be, it doesn't matter if he doesn't play. <laughs> Maybe they're thinking, you know what, we're not going to beat the Niners anyway. So let's just give him another week. You know? Yeah, there's a lot of injuries on that team, especially coming off of a bye. You think that's the week to get healthy and feel good, but... You know, whether it's Walker, whether it's DTR, whether it's Watson. I mean, I would say out of the three, Watson would be the toughest, even though he's not playing like his old self. But I really don't think it matters, Grant. I just don't. There's too many ways for the 49ers to win right now. I think that they're, if Chubb was healthy and if Watson had returned to form, then this easily could have been a game the 49ers would have lost. In fact, prior to the season, I, I picked it as a loss, but not now. There's no way. The 49ers are, are too good, and Cleveland is not who I thought that they eventually could be. All right, so Dorian Thompson-Robinson could play. He started one game in his career. It was last week or two weeks ago. They're coming off a bye, and his quarterback rating was, wait for it, 25. 0.3. He threw three picks. My goodness. So, yeah. Enter PJ Walker, who is 28. He went to Temple, kind of like, you know, career sort of backup dude, kind of like Josh Dobbs. And last year he got to start five games and won two of them. In his career, he's four and three with a quarterback rating of 63. So watch out, Niners. This guy has five touchdowns and 11 picks in his career. You watch out, Steve Wilkes. He's coming. Yeah, Walker. And the thing is, PJ Walker, P, uh, Steve Wilkes coached PJ Walker last year, right? He did. Yeah. Yeah. He, he knows everything about him, good or bad. PJ Walker, wasn't he like the USFL MVP or something? I'm pretty sure. Whatever. Why would you they have know a million that? extra leagues now? One of the leagues that recently came out, he was like the MVP over there. So, okay. So if they start P.J. Walker and there's like gusts of wind and there's lots of precipitation, does it even matter? Like, what would have to happen for the Cleveland Browns to win this game? Godzilla would have to make an appearance on the field in Cleveland. That's... It, it would have to be one of those types of games where you really can't throw the football. That would actually favor... Not favor. That would give Cleveland the best chance to win because then the quarterbacks are just taken out of it. Then it's like not Brock Purdy versus PJ Walker. It's just CMC versus Hunt, which 
is a little bit closer, I guess, but still not going to favor Cleveland. I just, I, I don't know. I, maybe the the one o'clock game traveling the East Coast, uh, a big emotional letdown. Uh, that's their only chance at this point. I don't think it's going to be close, but we'll see. Even with Watson, the Browns are going to lose. But without Watson, I mean, yes. yeah, Miles Garrett, great player. That defense, man, their co- corners are great, D line great, but they're going to score like nine points. That's the other thing, though. How great is a defense if it has to stay on the field all game long? That's what happened to Dallas. Dallas was leading the league in time of possession. Mm. And all of a sudden, they faced the 49ers and they couldn't move the ball. And so they went three and out, three and out, turnover. Your defense has to stay on the field. It, I don't care how great it is. If the 49ers scored quick or were going three and out three, four times to start a game, their defense wouldn't look as dominant either. Like you have to, your offense has to complement the defense. And Cleveland right now doesn't have an offense that can complement the defense. And that's their issue. You know, you know the Niners really did. Their defense put the clamps on uh, Dallas. But you know mm-hmm. who really impressed me in that game? Who really Ooh. showed out? Dak. Man, he was so good, so good in that game. Yeah. Like the way he threw three picks was just astounding. The way he gets worse every single time he faces the 49ers is remarkable. And I'm looking at his contract. Dude, his his cap number next year, next year is $59.4 million. They have a problem. Big time. No, he's worth it. I'm just kidding. He's great. This is the problem with paying quarterbacks that are borderline top 10 or have been top 10 at some point in their career, but aren't mainstays there. Guys like Kirk Cousins, guys like Kyler Murray, guys like Dak Prescott. They're great when everything around them is perfect. But the moment you start stripping away talent and you overpay them, you're in quarterback purgatory and you're not going to win Super Bowls. It's going to be very hard to do so. Same thing with Carr. Same thing with Jimmy. Jared Goff's another one. Like these guys are are anywhere from eight to twelve on any given year. But once they get paid, that's it. You know who the next one is? Who? He plays for the 49ers. Steve Young, Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold, Purdy. So eventually the Niners are going to have to pay Brock Purdy. And with the numbers he's putting up and a potential Super Bowl victory or two, and he's going to get $50, $60 million a year. And um, unless he's really, really one of the top three or four quarterbacks in the league, it's not going to be worth it. So that's something to look at down the line. At that point, the Niners might be coming off back-to-back Super Bowl victories, and who cares? But that's that's the problem with paying quarterbacks at – in general, they're so expensive. And even the ones that you think are worth it, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, like how many Super Bowls have they won? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's actually go the other way. Let's assume that he is good enough to carry a team. Let's say he gets to that point, right? Whether whether you believe it or not, let's say he gets there. Still, it is harder to win once the quarterback is being paid. That's why this window they have now this year and next year is so important. They have to go make they that's why I think they have to make a trade deadline move. I would rather make the move and not need it than need it and not have it. And that's where the 49ers are at. Like the Gregory thing is great, but I don't think that's the move that you make to go all in. When you're this close to winning a Super Bowl, I would like to see something else to just ensure that they are the best team. Why even play around? Just make sure you have the best team and do whatever you can to add more talent to it. Nelson Gonzalez says Flash Garrett will surprise many. I mean, who's he going to surprise? He's a good player. Who's he surprise. Yeah. Everyone knows he's good. Matt McEwen says he said he, if he could find the right masseuse, he will be ready. Mm. It's fair. Art Martinez is Grant. Been following since day one. Lately, you look like you don't like what you do. What's wrong, man? Well, the Niners are winning. I don't like it. I'm mad. <laughs> it's always their fault. I'm waiting for some drama. Blame right, the Niners. Time. This is the highlight of my day right here with Jesse, baby. <laughs> 